Hello everyone, this is Mr. Eck coming to you with just a quick video about how to find uh, the equations of exponential graphs when you're given two points. And we're going to find this using both the AB to the X model and the AE to the KT model. So when you're given the initial value, your life is a lot easier because the initial value is always A. A is that initial value. So in this case, we're given the point 0, 8. So when x is 0, we have, it's basically saying 8 equals a b to the 0. Well, b to the 0 is 1, so 8 is just a. So whenever we have x equals 0, whatever y equals, that's going to be the same as that a value. So we could write already y equals 8 b to the x. Now we just have to solve for b. And we're going to do that by using the other given point. So we were given 3, 15. So that's x comma y. So if y is 15, then it would be 8 times b to the third. Now we need to solve for b. We can divide 15 by 8. So divide by 8 on both sides, it's 1.875 is equal to b to the third. To cancel out a b to the third, you need to take the cube root. And the easiest way to do that on your calculator is to raise that to the one-third power. So we're going to take both sides of this to the one-third power. And we get that 1.233, uh, we're round to three places, so 1.233 is at least approximately equal to the B. So now to finish the job and write the full model, we could write the full model as Y equals 8 times 1.2. 3, 3 to the x. So that's our a, b to the x-based model that would go through these two points at least close to them, maybe a little bit off because of the rounding. Now, we can do an e-based model with the same points. Some people think that, oh, I can just use that point 233 3 as the rate or the k value. That is not true. We need to go back to the initial points again. So we know that y needs to equal a, e to the kt. If we think about the point 0, 8, then 8 would equal a e to the 0 t. And so 8 would equal a times 1, e to the 0 times whatever t is just 1. Um, I guess that'd be 0 k. There we go. That makes more sense. Uh, so a is still 8. So now we can go into the model and write y equals 8 e to the k t. Now we need to solve for k. Uh, but we again have the point 315, so we can write 15 equals 8e to the k3, or 3k. We're going to divide by 8 on both sides, so we'll go back here and do 15 over 8. I know it's the same as before, so it's going to be uh, 1.875 equals e. I'm going to write this as 3k, just instead of k3, it just makes more sense, it's the same thing. Now, we need to get this k out of here. We're going to do that with a natural log. So we're going to convert this to natural log form, uh, or log base e. So it's log base e of 1.875 would equal 3k, or on the calculator, natural log of 1.875 would equal 3k. So k would be natural log of 1.875, close parentheses, divided by 3. One nice thing is that when we've written this answer in terms of natural log, we can actually go back and write the model using this whole thing as our exact k value. So we could write y equals 8e to the natural log of 1.875 over 3x, or t. Uh, I'm going to use x, actually. That makes more sense. Or we could go ahead and evaluate this. So I got natural log of 1.875. You divide that by 3. We get 0.209. Uh, that's actually going to round to 0 0.210. So it's going to be y equals 8e to the 0.20. Um, no, 210x. And that would be our e base model. So that basically represents like a 21% rate of increase. And notice how that k value and that r value 
if you compare the two models, aren't actually exactly the same. They're really similar, but they're not the same. Uh, it's a slight percent difference because this e-base model represents continuous compounding, whereas this model represents compounding only once per year. So to reach the same amount with once per year compounding, you need a larger rate than you would with continuous compounding. So what do you do if you're not given the initial value? This is type 2. The first thing I notice is this is also an exponential decay because we have the points 350 and 710. So the graph would be something like this. So we should expect a, a decimal base for our B value, and we should expect a negative K for our K value just because we're looking at exponential decay. Let's go use the AB to the X model. Now here we can't immediately find A, but what we can do is use these given points to make two equations. So I can still write uh, Y equals AB to the X, and then I could use 350 and write 50 equals AB to the 3, and I could use 710 and write 10 equals AB to the 7. These are true things. Now, we have right here in front of us two equations and two unknowns. Doesn't matter that the unknowns are A and B uh, instead of X and Y. Two equations and two unknowns is always enough to solve. The most efficient way to solve this, which is what I'm going to show you here, is actually to take these two equations and divide one by the other. So I usually like to take the one with the highest exponent, so that's AB to the 7th. So I write 10 equals AB to the 7th, and then divide by the pieces of the first equation, the one with the smaller exponent. So AB to the 7th divided by AB to the 3rd would have to equal 10 over 50. So I'm kind of putting like the left side over the left and the right side over the right. And the reason that I do that is that a lot of stuff starts to simplify. A and A reduce out to 1. Since A is not 0, that's okay to kind of put everything down there uh, and reduce it out. Same with B. B is not 0, so we can divide by it and reduce. And we get 10 over 50 is just 1 fifth, and B to the 7 over B to the 3rd is B to the 4th. So to find B, we just need to take the 4th root, or alternatively, take both sides to the quarter power, 1 fourth power. So we can do 1 fifth, that's point 2. We can raise that to the 1 fourth power, and it's about 0.668, uh, we'll just say 0.669. So 0.669 is approximately equal to the B value. Now, in the previous problem, we had found the B value and we were done. Here, however, we still have to find the A value. But now that we know the B value, we can come back to either of these models. I usually pick the one with the smaller numbers. Um, we'll just use the second one and plug in the B value, and then that lets us solve for the A value. So uh, we can still write 10 equals A times 0 0.669 to the seventh. Oh, well that's easy, because now everything except A is a number. Um, to be the most precise, uh, don't just use 0 0.669, that's what you can write on your paper. You should use the thing that is fully in your calculator. So I'm going to do 0 0.669, raise that to the seventh. It's about point, there is a very small number. So then I'm going to do 10 divided by 0 0.669 to the seventh and that should equal A. Uh, so I'm going to do 10 divided by, and I go and get the whole previous number, type that in, and A is approximately 167.185. So the final model is Y equals 167.185 times 0.669 to the seventh. And like we said, this is exponential decay, so we do expect that base to be less than 1, which it is, that makes sense. Uh, and it is starting at a pretty high value, 167, because by the time x is 3, you have to get down to 50, and by the time x is 7, you have to get down to 10. So you probably do have to start around the 150s. Let's move on to the last example, which is using these same points. We're going to create a e-base model for the same graph using what everything we've learned here. So we... In the same way as we did on the left, we're going to plug 350 and 710 into the form y equals a e to the k t or a equal to k x. I'm going to swap that x for a or that t for an x because this is kind of like y uh, x and y. Maybe we should write that as x x uh, and let's plug those in. So we get 50 equals a 
e to the k3, and on the other side we get 10 equals a e to the, uh, nope, e is the base, raised to the k7 or 7k power. Same as before, we can just take one equation, if both equations are true and nothing is zero, we can take one equation and divide it by the other. And then, again, usually pick the one with the higher exponent. So we can say 10 equals a e to the 7 uh, k. Again, k7, 7 k are the same thing. And we'll divide that by, on the left, 50, and on the right, a e to the 3 k. 10 over 50 is 1 fifth. a reduces out to 1. And when you have e to the 7k over e to the 3k, it's the same as e to the 7k minus 3k, which is just e to the 4k. So this is 1 fifth is equal to e to the 4k. Now we can solve this with natural log. So we turn this into log base e, or just natural log of 1 fifth equals 4k. And we can divide both sides by 4. So the natural log of 1 fifth divided by 4 is going to equal k. We can go ahead and get that as a decimal, natural log of 1 fifth divided by 4. Make sure you close all your parentheses there correctly, and you get k is approximately negative 0.402. And again, I'm going to keep the whole decimal in the calculator, but I can write something that's rounded to three places on my paper. Now we still need to find the a value, that should be the same as it was in the other model, um, but I'm going to pretend that we didn't do the other model. So let's now plug in uh, our values for the other model, uh, or our values from here. So we have 10 equals a, which we don't know yet, e to the negative 0.402 times 7. So just plugging in that k that we now know, and we're using that to find a. So we can do e to the, and again, I'm going to use the whole value, not the rounded value, times 7. And that gives me 0.05, so I have 10 equals a times 0.0598. Uh, and I'm going to divide 10 by that, so 10 over 0.0598 equals a. Again, don't actually use the rounded value, use the exact value, or the not the exact, but the full value and you get 167.185 as your a value. So your full model should be y equals 167.185 e to the negative 0.402x, or t. And that's your final model. Notice uh, what I, we thought was going to happen was true. The a value for both models is the same. So if you are doing both models and you're correctly confident that you found A correctly on the left, you don't have to find it again, uh, although I would probably recommend doing so. Um, we can also check out when we did this E to the negative 0.402. Let's just check that again. E to the negative 0.402. You actually get 0.6687, which was the base of the exponential model. So we've, we've kind of talked about how this E to the K is equal to the uh, 1 plus or minus r if you're comparing the models. We've kind of done that in some other uh, places. So there is a way to directly convert these models, but if you're not feeling super confident, then I would go back to the original points and just redo all the work again, uh, showing all the solving, and it's just solving a system. Uh, so here's all the work in one spot for both types of models. If you know the initial value, of course, everything's a lot easier, but even if you don't know the initial value, it's not that hard to write an exponential equation that fits any two points of data. I hope that has informed you and educated you. Have a great day, and I'll see you all next time.